I'd like to begin our meeting by acknowledging that Ottawa is built on unceded Anishinaabe Algonquin territory. The peoples of the Anishinaabe Algonquin nation have lived on this territory for millennia. Their culture and presence have nurtured and continue to nurture this land. The city of Ottawa honors the people and the land of the Anishinaabe Algonquin nation. The city of Ottawa honors all First Nations, Inuit and Métis peoples, and their valuable past and present contributions to this land. Today, we are joined by two elders of the Anishinaabe Algonquin host nation. Elder Albert Dumont, a member of Kitigan Zibi Anishinaabe, is also known as Southwind. He is an Algonquin traditional teacher, an Ottawa poet laureate, a storyteller, and a speaker. We are honored to have you with us today. Elder Ron Bernard is an Anishinaabe Algonquin knowledge keeper. His archaeological knowledge has served the Algonquins of Pickwagnagon First Nation for many years. Elder Ron was also a band council member for many years, and his political experience is of great, significant, uh, great significance to the Anishinaabe, uh, Anishinaabe Algonquins. Elders Dumont and Bernard, I turn the floor over to you. Clay, and good morning, uh, everyone. I'd like to begin by uh, just letting you know that the Anishinaabe Algonquin uh, creation story begins on this territory. Uh, we are a people who became known as, uh, as the people of the, uh, the Great River. And whenever I say the Great River, I'm speaking about the Ottawa River. The, the river to us is, uh, is as much of our identity as human beings as, as, the, as the blood in, in flowing in, in our veins. That's how important the, the river is to us. Uh, you know, it was a trade route and, and, and it's good for you to know that nobody entered our territory that didn't respect the Algonquin protocols. That's the way it always was. That was the way that made sense. And that still makes sense. The Algonquins, uh, whenever we went into somebody else's territory, we respected their protocols. And it's good to, for uh, whatever your cultural background is, for people to never forget uh, about honoring the protocols of a host nation. Uh, I'd like to, uh, you know, th th these kind of meetings are, are important and mean a, a lot to, uh, to human beings, you know, to citizens, to people who want to make a, a better country, a, a better province and a better city. So this uh, prayer now is, is uh, important. It's a prayer from, uh, from an elder named Bill Twain, who was a Second World War veteran. And this is his uh, beautiful prayer. You know, that's, uh, Mr. Twain said that his family line kept this uh, prayer alive for possibly uh, thousands of years. And, and this is it. I want to say to the good spirit, Minu Manito, how grateful we are for everything that Creator placed in our homelands that help human beings to live well. We acknowledge and honor every tree, river, lake, and stream. I acknowledge and honor every bird, animal, fish, and all the good human beings. We're grateful for all those things in the sky world and all those things that live beneath the surface of the earth. We're grateful too for the bees and all the other insects that help the plants to grow. We're grateful for our medicines and for our ceremonies. We're grateful for our ability to prepare ourselves spiritually for that spirit world that will begin when the short physical life ends. We're grateful for our ability to bring peace and comfort to one another during times of troubles and in times of anguish. We ask you now, good spirit, to fill the space that we're in with your blessings and to touch each of us with the wisdom of our Anishinaabe ancestors. We ask that there will be good words spoken here today, strong words that will impact all of us emotionally and spiritually. We ask that if there's anyone who's listening to this prayer, who has a relative or a friend who's suffering somehow, whether from addiction things or depression or some kind of physical sickness, we ask that that relative or friend will have a good day today and that they will return soon to the family as a role model and as a mentor. We ask these things of you, good spirit, because of the great respect we have for everything that Creator has made Miigwech, I know we're going to have a good meeting. Elder Bernard? Good 
Can you hear me? We can, sir. Good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Ron Bernard. I'm a member of the Algonquins of Pequotinagon First Nation. And uh, I'm a retired uh, member of uh, Pequotinagon uh, First Nation Council. I've served uh, 20 years on that council. And uh, today I'd like to uh, provide uh, welcome to uh, the panelists uh, to the Algonquin First Nation Territory. And uh, just like to say that I think this is a, uh, a great move forward for the development of uh, the uh, civic cultural protocol for communications and uh, cultural partnership with the city of Ottawa. So, uh, miigwech. Miigwech. Today we've received no regrets. And so will the committee coordinator please call, uh, call the roll. My pleasure, Councillor. Councillor Deans. Here. Councillor Dudas. Here. Councillor El Shantiri. Here. Conseiller Fleury. Bonjour. Councillor Cavanaugh. Here. Councillor Kitts. Here. Councillor McKenney. Present. Councillor Meehan. Here. Councillor Tierney. Present. Vice Chair Eagle Eye. Here. And Chair Luloff. I am present. Thank you very much, Joey. Certainly appreciate it. And thank you again um, so much, Elders Dumont and Bernard, for joining us today, for your blessing uh, and for uh, your inspiring words. Je vous remercie uh, de vous uh, nous joindre uh, aujourd'hui. Today, we mark a significant milestone in the city's journey to reconciliation. The committee will consider the city of Ottawa, Anishinaabe, yeah, Algonquin Civic Cultural Protocol. This protocol has been developed since 2016 in full collaboration with host nation chiefs, elders, representatives, and community members. It frames the relationship between the city of Ottawa and the Anishinaabe Algonquin host nation and will be uh, a guide to our partnerships and shared action in the areas of arts, heritage, and culture. We'll hear more about this civic cultural protocol from Dan Chenier, General Manager of Recreation, Cultural and Facility Services, Natalie Zuniga, our Indigenous Cultural Developer and Host Nation Representatives shortly. I'd like to take a moment first to note that the protocol is a key action within the City's Reconciliation Action Plan, which Council approved in February 2018 as a response to the Truth and Reconciliation Commission's calls to action. Le protocol est un élément clé du plan d'action pour la réconciliation de la ville que le Conseil a approuvé en février 2018 en réponse aux appels à l'action de la Commission de vérité et réconciliation. The city has made progress on all of the action items from the Reconciliation Action Plan, and many have been completed, including the flags of Algonquin Anishinaabeg Nation Tribal Council, Algonquins of Pequagnagon, First Nation, were permanently installed in council chambers in Marion Dewar Plaza at City Hall and the mayor's office. The public art team has adapted their process for acquiring art by making it easier for Indigenous artists to apply and to have their art considered for purchase. Children's Services has leveraged provincial funding to support a licensed Indigenous-led child care center, child and family programs, and funding for the Early in, uh, Indigenous uh, Years Circle. The city also took on many new actions, including council approving the renaming of Langeve Avenue and Prince of Wales Bridge after the late Algonquin elder William Commanda. The city installed Algonquin wayfinding wheels by an Algonquin artist at all LRT stations and city hall. As part of LRT stage two, uh, baseline station will be renamed Algonquin 
and the Dominion Station will be renamed Kichizibi, based on the Algonquin name for the Ottawa River. And near and dear to my heart, obviously, is uh, the Ottawa Public Library and National Archives Joint Facility a project was named Adisoke, uh, a gift from the host nation which refers to the telling of stories. The name was provided by elders and members of the Kitigan Zibi Anishinaabeg uh, and the Algonquins of Pikwagnagan First Nation. That is an ongoing partnership and one that continues to blossom. La ville a créé un nouveau poste pour diriger l'intervention dans la réconciliation et ré, uh, ré, uh, raffermir la relation de la ville avec les Premières Nations et les communautés Inuit et Métis locales. And the first person uh, to take on that new role has joined us today. I am honored to welcome the city's new program manager for Indigenous Relations, Lindsay Kirby McGregor, who joined the Community and Social Services Department team on March 1st. Welcome. It is very nice to have you with us. Thank you so much for the work that you've undertaken and the work that you will continue to do. Lindsay is a member of Whitefish River First Nation, raised in the Ottawa area. She's worked with many Indigenous organizations and their partners across Ottawa, and has also lived and worked in Nunavik, Quebec. In her previous roles with the Minwashan Lodge as an Indigenous program manager at Willis College, she supported and created programs to support Indigenous women as they transition to careers in metropolitan communities like Ottawa. In her more recent work with the emergency management team at Callion, Lindsay contributed to many training, planning, and review projects with First Nations and tribal councils, municipal, provincial, and federal governments, and multi-jurisdictional stakeholders, as well as businesses. Lindsay is an experienced technical writer, educator, program planner, evaluator, and manager, who holds a Master of Education from the University of Ottawa, and a Bachelor of Social Work with an Indigenous Specialization from the University of Victoria. <clears throat> She's contributed to the, uh, to the development and evaluation of several Indigenous programs and hopes this lens will help contribute to planning that meets the needs of Indigenous communities. Lindsay's a board member of the Indigenous Arts Collective of Canada, which organized the National Day for Truth and Reconciliations event, Remember Me, on Parliament Hill on September 30th, 2021. <clears throat> Elle est également membre du comité d'éducation autochtone du Conseil des écoles catholiques de Centre-Est. And she brings to this new role a thorough understanding of the complexities involved in setting strategic direction for a city looking to develop collaborative relationships with Indigenous peoples. Nous sommes honorés que Lindsay se joigne à l'équipe de la ville d'Ottawa. Welcome and thank you for joining. We uh, now have one more thing uh, before we move on to business. We have an annual report from the Accessibility Advisory. Item number one, Recreation, Cultural and Facilities Services Department. Uh, this is the City of Ottawa Anishinaabe Algonquin Nation Civic Cultural Protocol and Implementation Plan 2022 to 2026. Uh, I will now turn this over for a presentation um, from Dan Chenier and uh, who will introduce our co-presenters who will briefly present the engagement process and collaboration with uh, the Anishinaabe Algonquin host nation. Thank you, Chair and uh, Joey. If I could have the presentation up, that would be uh, great. Good morning, everyone. Um, it's nice to see everyone. Bonjour à tous, Quay. Uh, we're honored and delighted to be here today to present the Anishinaabe Algonquin Nation Civic Cultural Protocol and its five year implementation plan. And, and I emphasize that because that is really the plan that is going to demonstrate uh, our commitment to the protocol through some concrete actions in. 19 areas of cultural work. Uh, this protocol is the culmination of several years of dedication, dedicated commitment to developing a, a strong partnership with host nation partners and is intended really to frame the relationship between the city and the Anishinaabe Algonquin host nation on cultural matters and provide a guide and in interaction, partnership development and shared actions in areas of arts, heritage and culture. Uh, of course, we are hoping that it lays the groundwork for um, 
for collaboration in many more areas, but this particular protocol is focused on culture. Uh, next slide, please, uh, Joey. And I've lost my screen. Okay, there we go. Oh. Just one moment, Dan. Oh, okay. It won't be long. Perfect. I'd also like to recognize that uh, Chief uh, Linda Robinson has joined us as well as uh, Chief uh, Dylan White Duck. Thank you very much for joining us today. Um, the, the slide you see uh, in front of you identifies uh, the key Anishinaabe Algonquin Nation partners that have uh, worked with the city for several years now. Uh, and participated in the development of the documents that we're presenting today. Cette diapositive identifie les partenaires clés dans le développement du protocole, uh, and they include uh, the Algonquin Anishinaabe National Tri Tribal Council, the Algonquin Na Nation Programs and Services Secretariat, the Al Algonquins of Pignatogan First Nation, and the Kitizan Zibi First Nation. We're very honored today to have with us, and, and the, the chair has already mentioned uh, a few of the participants, but these have been key partners and we're delighted that they were able to be here with us today. Uh, Acting, Chief, uh, Acting Grand Chief Savannah McGregor from Algonquin's Anishinaabe Nation Tribal Council, Grand Chief Lisa Robinson from Algonquin Nation Programs and Services Secretariat, Chief Dylan White Duck, Kittigs and Zibi Anishinaabe First Nation, and Councillor Dan Kohoko, Algonquin Piknakragan First Nation and Project Lead. And of course, joining me today um, is and from staff is Natalie Zuninga. Uh, Natalie has been our lead on this project. Natalie works with, uh, many of you will know, uh, Nicole Zuger and Kathy shepard who are also key, uh, key leads on this file uh, and have uh, over the years uh, really made this partnership possible and represented the city so well in terms of uh, our work with the host partners. Next slide, please, Joy. Um, what you're seeing on this slide is a cover of the renewed action plan for arts, heritage and culture. And, and we're showing you this because in 2010, council, city council uh, approved this document and uh, you know it was two years in the making. And one of the critical pieces of this document um, was a, a statement to honor and recognize Aboriginal First Nation Inuit and Michi culture and recognize Anishinaabe Algonquin Nation as, as the Indigenous community in Ottawa by developing a civic protocol, communication, and cultural partnership opportunities. So it, this is really kind of the, the foundational document that got us launched in this direction uh, and that has brought us to, to today. Next slide, please, Joey. Uh, the chair has already mentioned that several of the initiatives uh, that have been undertaken and uh, as, the, as this project moved along and consultation uh, developed into some concrete ideas, uh, our staff and the partners were quick to seize upon those and where possible implement uh, whatever we could uh, in a timely way. And so already, and the chair has mentioned some of these, uh, commemorative artwork at City Hall, Mary and Dewar Plaza, the flags on the plaza and, and in the chambers, uh, the honoring statement that, that was developed that we have now shared with uh, several other agencies, the Ottawa Public Library, with Ottawa Public Health uh, and others to uh, spread the word and, and essentially um, share with them the good work that we have done. Next slide, please. Uh, a key piece of, of, the, uh, of the work that we've done over the, the last few years has, has been not only to, to do work here in Ottawa, but also um, to, to undertake visits. And, and the slide shows here uh, staff visits to both Piknakwagan and, and the Algonquin and Anishinaabe Nation 
a tribal council. And this has been uh, an invaluable piece of the learning experience and the sharing experience uh, and um, really helped uh, deepen our understanding of what this pro protocol needed to be and what some of the actions needed to touch on. Next slide, please. And even though uh, recreation, culture and facilities uh, as a department were involved in our cultural unit where uh, we reached out to several uh, parts of the city and, and partners, uh, and some of them are listed here, archives, uh, the Office of Protocol, the library, uh, in order to make it a comprehensive approach to, to what we are doing. Uh, and, and that has, as you will see, when you look at the implementation plan, there is a little bit of something for everyone way beyond just one department uh, that we hope will, um, will all come to fruition. Uh, Natalie is gonna take over now. And when, one of the things I can say about uh, Natalie and, and the culture team uh, is that their dedication puts us in really good standing for uh, for the next part of this, because even though this is a protocol, the really important part is the implementation plan. Uh, and I have every confidence having seen the commitment of these staff over the last few years and the great relationship that they have built with the partners, uh, that we're going to get good results and that when we report back to you, uh, there will be significant accomplishment in terms of implementing the protocol. Uh, so Natalie, I'll turn it over to you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Dan. Good morning, everybody. Um, I will be talking about the, the, the content of the, of the protocol. Um, can you please pass to the next slide? So the, the civic cultural protocol is structured in five parts. The preamble explains the origin of the protocol that you have heard uh, uh, from Dan's um, presentation already. It introduces the Anishinaabe Algonquin Nation and the city of Ottawa a city as partners. Um, and it identifies uh, the city of Ottawa commitment to continue collaborating um, um, with the Anishinaabe Algonquin Nation. Um, and this collaboration be rooted in respect, uh, in mutual respect and responsibility. Part two of this protocol provides the definition that you have it in this slide there. So the civic cultural protocol frames and is, establishes a formal relationship between parties, providing a guide for relationship building, for partnership development, and for shared action. And in this case, uh, in the actions would be in arts, heritage, and culture. Part two, uh, also outlines um, the goals and benefits of establishing a cultural protocol. Please, could you pass this slide? Part three uh, of the protocol uh, provides the broad existing context of since time immemorial concepts, as well as local, provincial, national and international guidelines and legislation that form the foundational contextual information essential to deepen the understanding, facilitate relationship building, and support the collaboration with, in between the Anishinaabe Algonquin Nation and the city of Ottawa. Some of this, um, um, exam some examples of these concepts and, and documents and uh, guideline documents are in this slide. Could you pass the next slide, please? Um, part three also presents the mutually developed principles and commitments for working in collaboration. So as you can see, you know, these principles and commitments have been put forward by the, by the Anishinaabe Algonquin Nation and the city of Ottawa um, um, cultural um, and partner services areas. Next slide, please. Part four of the protocol provides important background information on the Anishinaabe Algonquin Nation, including 
the definition of unceded territory, the identification of the 11 federally recognized Anishinaabe Algonquin First Nations and tribal councils, and the context around urban Anishinaabe Algonquin members living and working in Ottawa. Next slide, please. Finally, part five is the implementation plan. We have learned that commitment is demonstrated through action. Actually, it was one of the first things that we heard directly from former chief uh, from Kirigan Zibi Anishinaabe um, First Nation, Gilbert White Duck, in our first meeting that we had in October of 2010. The implementation plan then translates our commitment into action. It was developed by the city's Cultural Development and Initiative Unit with the collaboration of City of Ottawa Cultural and Connected Services, who crafted objectives and actions in 19 areas of municipal cultural work. You can see you know, those 19 areas in this word cloud in, in this slide. One example uh, of these um, objectives and actions is um, the cultural awareness building um, or, uh, about the Anishinaabe Algonquin Nation through the creation of an educational video in collaboration with the nation. This is an action that is currently under development. To, to monitor the implementation of this protocol and uh, the implementation of this plan, a consultative cultural circle will be established in 2022 with representatives of the 11 federally recognized Anishinaabe Algonquin First Nations. They will gather two to three times per year and uh, as I mentioned, to monitor the implementation of the plan and to provide uh, or respond to a specific questions from various uh, city of Ottawa departments. The protocol and the implementation plan are leading documents to be reviewed for relevance and measured for accountability every five years. We are committed to continue learning and collaborating, working together with the Anishinaabe Algonquin Nation. Thank you. Okay, Dan, I don't know who you want to turn it over to next. Oh, thank you, Chair. Um, I believe that uh, now is the time for the chiefs and the representatives to to uh, to speak. Um, I leave it to to you to 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 call on them uh, to, uh, to to say a few words. Acting Grand Chief Savannah McGregor. Acting Grand Chief, please go ahead. Hey, good morning. Bon matin à tous. Hello. Um, it's my pleasure to be here. What a great day and to see this work come to fruition and to be presented here means so very much to our nation. Um, I'd like to acknowledge the good work that has been done in an extremely appropriate way. Um, it sets the bar to future working relations and that is key to moving forward in a good way that truly honors the Anishinaabe Algonquin Nation. This protocol is a step forward in honoring our history and our future on our unceded territory. And I'd like to commend all parties' efforts that have made this a reality for following through with the Truth and Reconciliation Commission's call to action, Article 57. Miigwech for your ongoing commitment and for working with us in collaboration. Um, on April 13th, the vote is yours and it would be beautiful to have it be a yes and miigwech. Thank you, Grand Chief. Uh, Grand Chief Lisa Robinson, please go ahead. Kwe Kekina, Mino Kijigan. Hello, everyone. Bonjour to. 
uh, it's a nice day, is what I stated in my, my language here. And I'm, today I'm coming to you from Temiskaming First Nation, which is located at the, the top of the Gitche or the Great River. Um, Weather-wise, it may not be a nice day, a little bit of rain, freezing rain, but, you know, it is a nice day that, you know, we're at this point now where this Algonquin Nation and City of Ottawa Civic Cultural Protocol and Implementation Plan is taking a huge step. So it is a moment to stay, you know, and with that being said, I would like to acknowledge and say chi miigwech to our elders, Elder Dumont and Elder Bernard, for, you know, providing their thoughts and their energy and, and opening us up here in a good way today. And I would also like to commend everybody that has been involved in the development of this. This work has been, um, you know, took some time to do. And, you know, and especially central to this was the, the City of Ottawa uh, Culture and Arts and Heritage Department. Um, they've been instrumental in making this work happen. So I'd just like to, to really say chi miigwech to them. Um, you know, this the intent of this document was to work in the spirit of collaboration. So I'm really happy to be here and, and speak to this, uh, you know, in partnership. And it's such an important key partner to have uh, us and the city of Ottawa. The city of Ottawa is located in the heart of Algonquin territory. You know, our people have been uh, here since time immemorial and will continue to be here. So working on this aspect, talking about uh, culture and heritage is so central to land. And that is the key element, you know, uh, in terms of this work moving forward. Um, Elder uh, uh, Dumont referred to the creation story and the Gitche and how that is so tied to our identity as a Anishinaabe Algonquin nation. And I'm so glad to see that being such a huge part of this plan and that we, as the right, you know, rights and title holders to the territory were involved in this process and that we were at the table with this process. So Chi Miigwech for making that happen, City of Ottawa. Uh, it's a meaningful relationship. It's a relationship that, you know, we look forward to continuing to develop. Um, this is a first step. We have a solid framework. We're excited to go. Um, and it is a first step, you know, and we talk about reconciliation in this day. Well, you know, following through with the implementation of this plan is a form of reconciliation. And that's where it counts. You know, in our language, I'm told by our elders that we do not have a word for sorry. Because the way we look at it is that it that that is represented by your actions. So the city of Ottawa you have a really great plan with a lot of key actions in it. And I look forward to that work and how it's gonna carry out and continue to involve us with the, uh, um, the, the consultative circle, which involves representation from all of the 11 Anishinaabe Algonquin nations to continue this work forward. So again, in the spirit of reconciliation, we look forward to walking this path forward with our relationship and partner, the city of Ottawa, and seeing where this is going to take us. This is the start of something good. And it's it's been a long time coming. And I think, you know, it'll continue to um, grow and develop. And I look forward to that relationship continuing. Chi miigwech. Chi miigwech, Grand Chief. Uh, Reconcilia action. That's exactly what we're looking for today. Incredible. Thank you so much. Uh, Chief White Duck, uh, no stranger to our committee, uh, certainly. Uh, please go ahead, sir. Uh, good morning, everyone. Um, first and foremost, I'd like to acknowledge the, the elders for the, the prayer this morning. And, uh, you know, all those who, uh, who got this whole process and got this project going, Natalie, and our, our elders from all the communities who contributed to this. Um, it is a document that should move forward, I believe. Um, I'm sure your members in the city of Ottawa and the people who vote you in would be very acceptive of this and you know it's just an important process i believe and it's going to be quite disappointing if it doesn't get passed or the motion doesn't move forward with your city and if it doesn't uh, uh doesn't move forward you know uh, this is why it's so important to reiterate this that the only way to move forward in terms of reconciliation is to work with the first nation communities who want to work, uh, work with the city of ottawa and it's fundamentally strong that we remind you that this is the unceded territory of the Algonquin Anishinaabeg people. And this has to be made aware. And you're doing a great job doing so with the name-ins and everything going on. But, uh, you know, when we met with uh, Jim Mayor, uh, Jim Watson, the mayor of the city of Ottawa, on uh, January 17th, 
he brought forward a motion to, to rename Wellington Street Reconciliation Way. And, and I had a little bit of a problem with that when he approached myself and Chief Wendy Jocko. And uh, I asked, how could you rename a street Wellington to Reconciliation Way uh, when you don't? And I asked, what is reconciliation to you? And, and the mayor couldn't answer that question. So for yourselves and, and all the council members here, it's important you understand the meaning of that word and, and understand that the people who will vote you in as, as leaders of, of the city of Ottawa, that you have a firm answer when someone asks you this because you don't wanna be caught um, empty handed and not being able to answer that question, right? Because what is reconciliation to you? If I ever to ask everyone this question, it's a very difficult question to answer. Uh, question to answer. So I'd say just be accountable to the people and to the Algonquin and Anishinaabeg people. And having that answer when you are asked that question is very important because we can all say we wanna have reconciliation. We all wanna move forward. But if we can't even answer that simple question, then we can't move forward, right? So I do hope this motion does get passed. I do hope that the, the city uh, understands my plea that this is a positive step forward and the people of Ottawa should be made clear that this is a one good step towards reconciliation. And I always feel like, you know, we always take one step forward, but sometimes we take two steps back. So we're always behind. So that's what I want to highlight the importance of and thank you to everyone and good luck to uh, Lindsay Kirby McGregor and her role in getting uh, um, this, this whole project started and once it's adopted um, she's going to be very busy with all four of us and the communities involved in this so kitchen miigwech and hope everyone has a great day okay miigwech. miigwech chief wise words and thank you for that uh, Councillor Dan Kahoko. Good morning, everyone. I wanted to acknowledge and say uh, thank you to the uh, the elders for the prayers and good work this morning. I also wanted to say the same to uh, my fellow Algonquins who, who uh, just finished uh, speaking. Chief Wendy Jocko was not able to be here, so she did ask me to... Uh, stand in and say a few words about if it was on the agenda, and I see that it is. Um, so uh, she didn't leave any, any, any particular message, so um, I'm going to go back to an earlier experience that I had working with the city in respect of culture and cultural protocol at the time. Um, I put forward the idea that uh, the city of Ottawa is located on unceded, unsurrendered Algonquin traditional territory. And it's also a place of, that, that, that Canadians come to visit as their national capital, but it's also a place where the international community comes into uh, Canada as well. They, we have embassies here, we have uh, uh, all, all kinds of uh, places like that. And I said, the one thing that the city needs to have by way of a cultural demonstration is for those people, whether they're from within Canada, whether they're First Nations from elsewhere in Canada, whether they're international visitors, they need to know and they need to understand that they are on Algonquin traditional territory. They need to know that. And there needs to be some uh, cultural displays put up within the city, around the city to actually uh, uh, demonstrate that. So uh, uh, I think that uh, that is one thing that I, was, that I was worked for in the past. I know uh, we have uh, put a cultural uh, worker in place to uh, to work on, on a number of projects and I haven't given that kind of information to uh, I believe that Natalie who has been involved with the uh, for for quite a long time is aware of uh, you know what my thoughts were in relation to that kind of uh, 
uh, messaging. But I do believe that you know we, we, we really need to put our brand on this territory, on the city, because it is in the heart of our territory, our traditional territory. And the, the, the cultural uh, uh, things that are around supporting us, I, I applaud that. They, uh, I believe that they're uh, very much on board with working with us. And I think we're very much on board with advising them about the right way to do things. So. That's uh, what I would say. The the, uh, the protocol, I think, is a very good initiative. It, it outlines some of the stuff that we can actually work to improve our relationship and tell the world who we are. I really, I really believe that that's the case. I know that uh, Chief Wendy Jocko supports doing that exactly that and. Uh, I, I uh, stand behind her from our end, and I, I know that the, uh, the chief of council, the full council here, would also stand behind that. So the Gretsch people, keep up the good work. I mean, you guys do but just bad from what I can see. Even okay. Thank you. Thank you very much, Councillor. And today is uh, is the culmination of that commitment to continuing uh, to work together on these uh, on these very very important items. So I thank you so much for that tangible example of something that we can do to work together uh, in in reconciliation. So thank you so much, Councillor. Uh, we truly appreciate your time with us today. Dan, do you have anything further before uh, we bring the item before the committee? Uh, no, Chair, that is uh, the extent of the presentation, and we're open to questions. Thank you very much. Uh, questions to staff? Um, Councillor Fleury, please, go ahead. Thank you, Chair, and I, I won't be too long. I, I too want to thank uh, the, the Chief's uh, elected members who, who came to this morning uh, to, to speak candidly to us and also to, to share uh, opportunities and synergies and challenges that, uh, that we have and, and will face together. Um, I... Chair, I'm not sure if it's best suited for uh, the city to respond or maybe uh, in reflection of what uh, Chief White Duck was saying, I, I would wanna create that space if that's possible. But um, with the 19 objectives that are in front of us, how, how does he see best fit for us to find a, 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 a kind of a, a continued sounding board so that if there are issues that arise, uh, we can quickly respond, evaluate, and and improve on. And I'm I'm curious to to understand, and from the city, but also from uh, Chief White Duck, because I, I believe his comment was very uh, very fair, and we have to uh, we have to recognize uh, th those those challenges that we all face. So, uh, Chair, I, I'm in your hands, but I, I would love to to hear from Chief White Duck a little some clarity, and maybe uh, maybe Dan after could could add or clarify from from the city's perspective. Certainly, Chief Wattak, please, uh, if you'd like to go first. Yeah, no, no problem. Um, as I mentioned, I, 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 I think uh, your city has to approve this motion, uh, get this project in, get this protocol in place. First and foremost, as I mentioned, it's important that uh, the, the, the city understands this. And, and this is right now is a perfect and great step towards reconciliation. You know, you have to work with the First Nations people, not demand what the First Nations have to do, right? That's not the way it should be presented and, and worked around. So um, you got some great partners here, uh, Matt, uh, Councillor Matt Fleury. Um, we're dedicated to helping you if this this protocol is implemented and worked on. And, uh, you know, there's many uh, implementation, uh, as you mentioned, to, 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 to work on, you know? And the only way to move forward in terms of, as I mentioned, reconciliation is work with the communities. We're not, we're not your enemy. Uh, we're, we're your friends, we're, we're your allies in a modern day society that we live in here in 2022, you know, but, uh, but rightfully so, you know, we've never surrendered or we never uh, gave up the, the title and territory of the land that you, you're, you're all standing and sitting on right now. And uh, so this has, this has to move forward and, 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 uh, you know, 
I'll, I just want to say we're, we're willing to work with you. So just give us a chance to work on this this, this protocol for the next uh, four four or five years. Thank, thank, thank you, you, Chief. Um, um, Grand Chief uh, Robinson, please. Yes, go ahead. Oh, Grand Chief, uh, if you can just uh, remove yourself from mute. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry about that. Yeah, no, no I just want to continue to elaborate on the relationship piece here. Um, this has been an ongoing work for some uh, 12 years now. And, you know, and we built that rapport and we continue to build that relationship and that trust with the city of Ottawa. Absolutely. And as the Algon uh, Nishnabe Algonquin Nation, we're absolutely committed to, to this process and working with the city of Ottawa. You know, the city of Ottawa is the heart of our territory. And I know this is the first step. And this is a solid framework now that can guide that relationship. And it is a living document. So as things come up in the future, we're definitely committed to being a part of the solution. And that's where we want to be. You know, our people have been here at the heart of our territory, welcoming settlers from time immemorial. And we still are here today. And we still want to continue that work as well, because we know that um, it, it's such an important place in our territory for our culture and our identity as the Anishinaabe. So, Chinooch. Chinooch. And then uh, from uh, from the city side of this uh, collaborative table, uh, Dan, please go ahead. Thank you, Chair. Um, one of the things that uh, Natalie mentioned earlier is, is that right away in 2022, the, one of the action plans is to form a consultative circle. Um, because um, we understand that it, it's been a while and we've been working, Natalie and her group have been working closely uh, with, uh, with our partners, um, but there was a sense that there is a lot of work on the table here. And I, and I think that the, the point has been made that, uh, you know, actions need to be strong now. And we don't, we didn't envision a situation where we would go off and do this uh, on our own, uh, that we needed a, a mechanism. And so we will, we will work to get that circle established, uh, to have a, a governance and, and a consultative process that works. And it is a work in progress. And so if what we designed and recommended through this needs to be modified, uh, we will do that. We are open to that. We're open to finding something that works so that there is good communication, good consultation, and good progress. So we think we have an immediate mechanism in place uh, to get off on a solid launch with everybody talking to each other. Thank you. Seeing a lot of nodding uh, heads around the table uh, while everyone was speaking on that one, which is always a very good start. Uh, Councillor Fleury, uh, please go ahead. Yeah, Chair, uh, thank you so much. And, and thank you, uh, Chief uh, Robinson and, and White Duck and Dan for your answers. Um, maybe Chair, and I don't know that we'll resolve this at, at, uh, at this table today, but for our consideration, I, I appreciate the circle initiative and let's not slow down that process. But as we end this term, I think it is important in the future terms that council look at a, uh, a liaison role um, for, uh, for, for a member, for an elected member, either from this committee or, or from council as a whole to, because right now, as we can see, we have elected members uh, that are with us today. And it's great to have staff support. It's great to have a community support more uh, broadly, but I think it'll be important also to have a, a, a council uh, liaison as, as we've done so successfully in uh, gender equity and um, in, uh, in, in racial uh, efforts as well. So I, uh, in breaking ra racial barriers as well. So I want to make sure that uh, we consider that maybe that maybe that uh, either uh, chair through you or directly to Dan, I see Dan nodding as well. I don't know if it's part of that governance or if we give direction to the clerk to consider it for next term. And I'll, I'll leave it in your capable hands. Thank you very much. No, I think that's a that's an excellent point uh, to be making, Councillor. Um, we'll I'd, I'd like to uh, to uh, you know, on behalf of the committee, uh, you know, move that as a direction uh, to uh, the city clerk's office uh, to have that to be considered as part of uh, our uh, first governance report upon uh, reconvening uh, council uh, post the 2022 election. I think that that's a, an incredible idea and a great contribution to the committee today. Thank you for that, Councillor. Uh, Councillor Kavanaugh. Thank you very much, Chair. Um, I, I like that suggestion. My question was actually going to be about uh, the role of councillors um, in, in working on this. 
Um, I realize it's, uh, it, it, you know, it's, it's more directly with staff in the city, but um, I wanted to know where councillors fit in um, and uh, to make sure that we're following protocol, et cetera, and uh, that we're, you know, part of the solution and, and, and part of that uh, working together. So I, I do like that idea um, of, uh, of a liaison. And of course, there's a lot of interse intersectionality as, a, as I'm aware as the liaison on women and gender equity. So, uh, so obviously it's, a, it's working together on that as well. But um, any suggestions for, for counselors as well um, is, is very helpful. Thank you. That's an that's an excellent question, uh, and I think that you know part of strengthening our strengthening our ties between the host nation and the city of Ottawa are those interpersonal relationships that can be developed between band councils and our council as well. And I think that uh, you know there's there's obviously a lot of learning to do uh, on our side, and I think that the best way to do that is between individuals. You know, being able to, you know, in in the spirit. Uh, of friendship uh, and collaboration, being able to ask those questions and and work together and work through these things. I think that's a an excellent question, uh, Councillor. Um, would it be most appropriate uh, for for our staff uh, to comment on that, or would any of the uh, host nation chiefs or councillors wish to comment on that? Yes, uh, please uh, go ahead, Grand Chief. Okay. Um, I, I think uh, those those ideas are great, you know, in terms of uh, moving forward with the relationship, because like I said, this is the first step of this. And I think if we can uh, figure out better ways to work together, uh, you know, we're all, uh, you know, selected to lead in our communities and, and you you as counselors as well. And, and I think there could be a process that even at that level, looking at, you know, doing some of that work vis-a-vis -vis, um, together, you know. Uh, and implementing it that way as well could be another aspect to this too. Um, you know, it's, uh, you know, my understanding of the city of, of Ottawa is that, uh, you know, you have a large organization with many different departments. And, and I think for us as, as uh, the Algonquin uh, Nishnabe Nation here, what we need to be looking at is tying in, you know, at uh, the, the proper way. And I think, you know, that con conversation could be furthered in terms of how we see that and how we see our role in taking our seat at the table, you know, and I really appreciate, you know, these ideas and stuff. And I think it's open to further discussion. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Thank you very Thank you. much. Uh, any further questions, uh, Councillor Kavanaugh or comments? No, that's fine. Thank you very much. This is a wonderful discussion. Thank you very much for all the contributions to it today. Councillor Deans. We just can't hear you. Sorry. Um, Chair, you, you asked uh, about the role of council. I do believe that there is a significant role for each of us in fostering our own knowledge and understanding. When I was the chair of CPS last term, I worked um, closely with many of the uh, leaders in the uh, communities. And we actually, um, we actually went to um, uh, visit uh, the reservations and uh, uh, spend some time with the um, um, communities. And I think that was very helpful for all members of council. So I might suggest that that's something we can do. I think the more um, understanding that we have and the more ties that, uh, um, that uh, bind us together, the better it will be going forward. And uh, I, you know, um, I think I could answer the question of what reconciliation means to me. And I think um, the more we work together, the easier the answer to that kind of question would be. So that would be my suggestion. Okay. I think that that's an excellent suggestion. And I think that this committee uh, would be very open uh, to an invitation of that sort uh, to, to garner better understanding and knowledge. I think that that would be a wonderful idea. And thank you very much uh, for that suggestion today, Councillor Deans. Uh, Councillor Brockington, please. Thank you, Chair. I, although I don't sit on this committee, I'm here today because this report and uh, progress is important to me as it is to the city and, and our allies uh, in the First Nations in this area. And um, I wasn't planning to speak, but I just want to compliment some comments that have already been made. And that is, uh, I strongly believe that 
progress and deeper and more meaningful progress between our First Nations brothers and sisters in the city can be even better if we have opportunities to meet each other. As a city council, we have not sat down with our First Nations brothers and sisters in a informal setting, not to have a, a business meeting, but simply to meet one another and talk and learn from each other. And I know this term of council is slowly coming to an end and maybe opportunities uh, are, are perhaps better for the next council, but I strongly believe that in, in most situations, you can make much more progress together if you have opportunities to get to know each other on a personal level. And that's been lacking from the city of Ottawa. The mayor might reach out and have one-on-one -on -one meetings or committee chairs or even our staff who have gone for visits and that's great. But if it's nation to nation, we have to show up as a council. And I think as our chair, if you could take that away from me and, and raise that with the mayor, I, I very much uh, want to sit down with our First Nations brothers and sisters for that conversation. I've had uh, Chief White Duck, the, the older Chief White Duck, I, I'm not sure if, if it's the father of the current Chief White Duck in River Ward for events, appreciate those opportunities. But I do think those informal conversations are just as important. And I would, I would like to see that happen. So thank you. My commitment to do so, uh, Councillor Brockington, uh, an excellent contribution as well today. I do see uh, that uh, Acting Grand Chief uh, McGregor would like to speak on this item. So please uh, go ahead. Yeah. Miigwech, Matthew. Um, i just like to share that we're here. And and you know what a history of our nation has looked like and the things that we've gone through. And we must always keep moving forward and, and keep our eyes on the horizon and keep our shoulders back and our chin up. And this protocol is a beautiful seed of a new relationship and a new direction with a, a vision that honors and respects us and, and we help create our, and our, we're, we're not, we're gonna, we're, we have to work together and this commitment and the ideas and these discussions are, are key to getting to that place that everybody wants to be. So miigwech and thank you. Chief miigwech. Do we have any further uh, questions on this item? I think that it's important that we have a strong endorsement uh, of the three items uh, in front of us going into council. So I'd like to propose uh, that we vote on each on each item, please. So uh, the three recommendations um, coming out of this report are one, so we'll vote on each, uh, receive and approve the City of Ottawa Anishinaabe Algonquin Nation Civic Cultural Protocol and Implementation Plan attached as document one and as outlined in this report. On item number one, is this item carried? Carried. 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 Excellent. Carried. Item number two, direct staff to initiate the recommended actions toward achieving the objectives outlined in the implementation plan section of document number one. Is this item carried? Carried. 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 Thank you. Item number three. Direct staff to report back to Community and Protective Services Committee and Council on the status of this implementation plan actions by Q2 2024. Is this item carried? Carried. Carried. Excellent. A strong endorsement of this report at this committee. This will rise to Council at our next meeting, and we very, very much looking forward to getting started on the work that we've begun today. Thank you so much uh, to the elders, to our poet laureate, to our speakers today, uh, to, our, uh, to our grand chiefs, chiefs, uh, council members uh, that have joined us to speak today. Uh, your wisdom was well received, and we certainly appreciate this first step uh, toward uh, a beautiful and successful strengthened relationship. So thank you so much for being with us today.
Item three, motion appeal of consent to sever decision for 1962 Brophy Drive. Carried. Community and Protective Service Committee Report Number 24, Rapport Number 24, Committee de Service, Communitaire et de Protection. Item four, City of Ottawa, Anishinaabe Algonquin Nation Civic Cultural Protocol and Implementation Plan. Ville d'Ottawa, Protocol Culturel Civique Relatif à la Nation Anishinaabe Algonquin et Plan de Mise en Ouvre 2022-2026. Carried. Thank you for everyone's input. Item five, recreation, renewable funding, and facility access. Financement. I'm pleased to uh, welcome uh, my council colleagues uh, this morning for our second in-person council meeting this year, and uh, to a number of special guests who we'll hear from in just a moment. We have a special presentation this morning. I want to thank Elder Amy Bailey and Elder Albert Dumont for joining us uh, this morning to deliver in Indigenous blessings. I'd like to extend a warm welcome to all our guests, and I'm pleased to recognize representatives of the Anishinaabe Algonquin Nation uh, who are joining us remotely. Uh, Acting Grand Chief Savannah McGregor, Grand Chief Lisa Robinson, Chief Dylan White Duck, and Chief Wendy uh, Jocko, and Councillor Dan Kohokoko. I wish to acknowledge that Ottawa is located on the unceded territory of the Anishinaabe Algonquin Nation. I'd like to honor the land and the peoples of the Anishinaabe Algonquin Nation whose ancestors have lived on this territory for millennia and whose culture and presence have nurtured and continue to nurture this land. It is important to que that the ville d'Ottawa is situated. We must end. I would like to honor the land and the peoples of the Anishinaabe Algonquin Nation whose ancestors have lived on this territory for millennia and whose culture and presence have nurtured and continue to nurture this land. Elder are the foundation of indigenous communities and I'm honored to begin today's me meeting with blessings from Elder Bailey and Elder Dumont. Good morning, everyone. Greetings from the Algonquin people on the south side of the Gijizabi. The Chichiman behind me was made by my grandfather, Matt Bernard, who served several terms as chief of Pequoknagon in the early 20th century. While he saw many changes come from our people during, this, during his lifetime, I believe that he would be very happy to see that the city of Ottawa is making positive changes in your relationship with us as you live in our unceded territory. Your reconciliation plan of inclusion helps us to feel safe and valued within your jurisdiction in a way that will allow us to help you progress towards a holistic future in harmony with our mother, the earth. Allow me to share my morning prayer with you. Joshko Benesikwe Indijnakos, Nume Endodem, Mamawi Tanakawen Indujiban, Medewian Mamawi Anishinaabe Kwendel. Thank you, Creator, for this day, and thank you for the lives of everyone present. Thank you for all the joy that you bring to each of us today in the many ways that you do. Thank you for relieving all of our various aches and pains and worries and frustrations and hurts, and thank you for helping us to be open to hearing the knowledge that others will share today. Thank you for helping us to treat each other kindly today as we would like to be treated. Thank you for helping us to face whatever challenges come today with integrity. Thank you for helping us to, sorry, thank you for helping each of us to be honest today with ourselves and with, with each other. Thank you for helping each of us to realize ourselves as a sacred but equal part of creation, no greater or lesser than another. Thank you for bringing us to a new understanding of our work together today that makes our hearts happy. And thank you for always watching over our families and friends and each of us, and for bringing us good health, prosperity, and everything that we need to live a good life. Miigwech, 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 miigwech. Miigwech, Elder Amy, for your special prayer. I'm going just to comment about the uh, 
having a Anishinaabe Algonquin voice at the city hall meetings. I think it's the the right thing to do, and and I'm and I feel very uh, positive that the citizens of Ottawa feel the same way, and I'm and I'm hoping that the politicians at City Hall will will feel the same way as well. Uh, the Anishinaabe Algonquin have been here for over ten uh, thousand years. We have scientific evidence of that fact. Our, our oral traditions know it to be true. I believe that the our physical DNA of the Anishinaabe Algonquin is in every pine tree, every maple tree, every birch tree of our resource-rich lands, which include uh, the area where the city of Ottawa is built. For me, it's... Uh, it's a, a creator, you know, uh, when we think about our creation story and why it was that creator felt that human beings that would become known as the Anishinaabe Algonquin would be stewards of this territory. It was a, a great uh, thing, not just for the, uh, for the animals, birds, and the trees, and the fish, of our territory, but also for the for the for humankind, we are um, a unique people. I believe we have our own uh, way of seeing the world, and it's a gentle way. Our people never uh, harmed uh, the settlers and colonizers. Uh, whenever we had the ability to do so, uh, whenever our, our numbers were greater than yours were. So I think it's uh, it's just uh, the right thing to do to have our, our voice present at city hall meetings, and for have a, to have a, um, to, to get a perspective of what it is that relationship that human beings are supposed to have with between each other, especially at the time of reconciliation. So that's that's how I see it, and uh, and I wanted to to express that at this time, and I, I wish everyone a good day. And I, I know I know you're going to have a good meeting. So make much for allowing me to speak. Well, thank you very very much, uh, Elder Bailey and Elder Dumont, for your guidance and your sage words. Before we move on to presentation, I'd like to take um, a moment to invite everyone who is able to to please stand for a moment of personal reflection. <clears throat> 